Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. This is the weekly recap. Michael and I have been busy this week. The stories are phenomenal. And I'll tell you, it is just getting crazy. We've got a bunch of great podcasts coming up. I uh, got some new uh, ones with uh, Josh Young over at Bison and a few other folks that were getting scheduled in on the podcast. But uh, buckle up. I'm going to turn this over to the uh, staff and let them pick the uh, best of the week. So enjoy the show. Trump shot in the year at camp campaign rally. World leaders react. Michael, I just want to say I am our hearts go out for everyone that was there. The family of the deceased. That's the first thing. President Trump. What a fighter. This really got me worked up. <laughs> I'll I tell you what. I wouldn't have thought that. Oh, I am so grumped out. Now, here we are. For our podcast listeners, I'm pulling out, do I wear my army hat or do I wear my Trump hat? I don't really care anymore. I am going to wear this hat with pride everywhere mm. I go. And to anybody that's in my family, screw you. I'm wearing the hat. Well, you heard All it right. here second, Bo. First off, this is an official endorsement for Stu. I can tell you I'm shocked. Oh, yeah. Hey, by the way, hats off to the Secret Service that did step up. But yep. I also want to say there are rumors out there saying who to blame. I'm going to say this, Michael, the who to blame on this. There are the what the eight Democrats that filed for legislation to remove Secret Service. They need to be thrown out of Congress. The other one is President Biden. President Biden called on this and said there was going to be some changes happen this weekend. He telegraphed some things. I'm not going to get into that. But there are things that the shooter, that the sniper, that actually was the police sniper, there are rumors, and I don't have this verified, but I have sent it to Dan Bongino for verification. He said he was told to stand down, Michael. I'm not going to say that that is the truth. But I am saying I'm asking for Dan Bongino to check that one out, because if the Secret Service did ask him to stand down, that is a failure. And the DEI of the David Blackman put out a video of it looked like Keystone cops, the females trying to protect Donald Trump, President Trump is pathetic. I am sorry. I am all worked up on I, this. I saw one tweet that said this looked like an episode of Reno 911. And if you've ever if you've ever seen that show, it was really true. You know, first off, obviously super scary. It is kind of incredible to think about the the as this article goes on to talk about how strong the world leaders have come out and condemned this and how little our our own government has come out to release this. And, I mean, I'm an avid New York Times reader, and I just thought he fell off the stage until I actually saw the video. CNN said he fell off the I stage. Know. It was insane. I mean, you, you within five seconds of watching the video, you knew what happened. Yet you had you had all these people trying to tiptoe it around because let's make it very clear. It, Trump's going to win in November. I mean, if there was any doubt of him winning, he, this blew it out of the water. This changed it for not only for me, I am done pussyfooting around with anybody telling me that, oh, we got to be nice. I'm sorry. The gloves are off, dude. And this is now a battle for the survival. And do not kid yourself. The deep state. Here's where I've been very vocal about this. General Flynn, you are now needed as our vice president more than ever. We need you to clear out the deep state for four years as VP and then eight years as president. General Flynn, you have an open invitation on this podcast. And by the way, we need you to clear out the deep state. Well, and. There really is no way to tie this into energy, so I think we'll ju we'll just stop it here. I think it's a sad day for America. We decry any type of violence, so hopefully there's no retaliation. No. This should be a consolidation and a coming together, and obviously I think in November it's going to be pretty clear what's going right. to happen, and we'll cover on down the line in the eventual victory about what this means for the oil and gas business. But exactly. for now, we just decry violence, and we hope 
everybody can at least now Trump's okay, take a deep breath and hopefully move on to to to, to trying to figure out and help fix what's going wrong in this country. But I agree. What's but what, what's up next? Let's let's just say this. I have always defended those around me. I have never made a first violent. I will defend people around me. And if anything happens around me, I will throw my life on the line for folks. That is something I have done, period. Western companies are now paying for Russian sanctions. Great. European and U.S. Com companies still have billions of dollars in assets in Russia, and Moscow is starting to retaliate. I'll tell you what, this is unbelievable. Michael, one little fact before we get into this article. Before the war, Ukraine, Russia spent, I believe it was 75% of the transactions in Russia were in U.S. dollars. They're down less than 20%. That is a statistic that is going around the world and why the value of the dollar will go down eventually. People don't need the U.S. dollar anymore. Quote, unquote, our country has significant amount of Western funds and property that are under Russian jurisdiction. All of this may be subject to Russian retaliatory policies and retaliatory actions, said Maria Zokoa, spokesperson for Russian's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Of course, no one will disclose the nature of those retaliatory actions to you, but the arsenal of political and economic countermeasures is wide. The man's in charge of BRICS this year. I mean, he's going to escalate everything he possibly can to go around the world on this. Yeah, so according to some analysis done by the Kiev School of Economics and I mean, a Brussels-based think tank, well, I'll leave my yeah. comments aside for what I think of a Brussels-based think tank, but they claim that since 2022, 40% of all you know, European and U.S. companies have pulled out about 40% of their Russian assets, but there are still foreign assets worth about $194 billion in Russia. Of those assets, $32 billion are owned by U.S. companies, while another 90 still belong to European countries. So it's proving harder to get out. And as we always say, at the end of the day, the consumer, you, takes it in the shorts. Exactly. You know, it, it's like there's a Russia in Germany. There is a Russian Russian refinery that they are now confiscating. And that is that is just, you know, guys, you need to learn how to negotiate with Putin rather than confiscate, my opinion. Yeah, it's I mean, two things can be true. We cannot like Putin, but we can also think what this entire charade that's going on is inappropriate in order to handle the situation. I mean, people don't think we can walk and chew gum at the same time. We can. We do it all the time. You may be. I don't. But, you know, the, the, the one thing is don't ever underestimate Putin and negotiate. He understands negotiation. So, I mean, look what he did to the sanctions. They sanctioned the, the EU and the U.S. sanctioned the snot out of it, and he's risen the income per capita at, in Russia to now the fourth in the fourth in the world. Okay, let's just let's just be clear. Yes, that is a true fact. But why is that true? Well, they have a commodities based economy. The commodity price, specifically for oil, which is their biggest export, has gone up about twenty percent relative to twenty twenty two, and now. Now, you could say that was that's got nothing to do with Putin and has really everything to do with the con, you know, a, a large yeah. amount of of fragmented energy policies coming to case. So, yes, he has done that. A lot of it is just because he's gotten lucky with oil prices. Let's just put it out on the tape. I'm going to throw this at it, though, that he helped develop the dark fleet and get around the sanctions through mechanisms and purchasing in Indian rupees. But, but no one he's not controlling the oil price. That's just. No, he's not controlling the oil price, but he's gotten around the sanctions and improving business. UK offshore energy industry unveils blueprint for net zero power. By 2030, the UK will need to add 90 gigawatts of new capacity. This is on offshore. That's more than 90 million homes must be outsourced from renewables involving tripling of offshore capacity. The additional 15 gigawatts of low carbon dispatchable energy, which is not true on wind. The interconnect power transmission capacity needs to be extended from the current 10 gigawatts to 20 gigawatts by 2030. 
According to the report addressing planning challenges around coordinated efforts to reduce project lead times. Really? It will be a Herculean effort, says David Whitehouse. In the UK, they're already having huge energy costs. Deindustrialization is happening at an epic scale. Food is going to go through the roof, and this is going to be a blueprint of what not to do. So interesting article. Want to give a hand handout for them. And it originally appeared, I believe, on Energy Live News. Countering Europe's backlash to the green transition. What you're seeing here is the hypocrisy that is being devoted in a energy transition because a transition can only happen if it is truly a transition. I don't see an energy transition happening anytime soon because we're going to need nuclear and natural gas for as long as I can see. Um, the, the technology will be there. We may not need it after a while, but in the next 50 years, we're going to need a lot of nuclear and natural gas in order to get there. A sustainable future is still possible even amidst a radically altered political climate. You're going to see more and more political climate changing. People are tired of being told how to live, how to be taxed, taxed and taxed and taxed again. Tapping into the widespread sense of economic insecurity, both right wing and centrist parties adopted this narrative and sparked political politicized debates. The frames on the frames that pro green and pro conservative policies are opposing forces. This is going to continue and just escalate going all the way through. Um, this is a very lengthy article. The link between environmental regulations and industrial policy needs to be strengthened. When you sit back and take a look at the industrialization that's going on in all economies that go heavily into wind and solar negatively impact the negative to the converse. So the more money we spend on wind and solar, the more the deindustrialization happens and the more coal burning goes on. It is just mind boggling how this whole relationship is building out that it is more harmful to force a transition rather than to have a good plan. Nine consequential energy predictions, mid-year review from Forbes contributing author, David Blackman. Dun, Step dun, dun. on out. Here it is. Let's go through these real quick. Non-Tesla automakers will be pressured by investors to scale back plans, EVs even further. It's an easy one. 100% agree. I couldn't agree more. Tesla is going to do well. Ford shoot themselves in the foot. And the splatter is, they're going to chainy themselves and the splatter is going to get all the investors. Renewable energy sources will keep growing, but growth will be tilted to more solar than wind. I said this four or five months ago. I think we still will see more solar. Wind is quite honestly an abomination in my opinion. The whales right. are the whales are excited to hear that. What do we what's the next one? National energy security. Oh, you missed one. The world will use record oh. volumes of coal. Interesting. Oh, I think that and it goes back to my saying that you've been I've been talking about for four years. The more we go renewable, the more fossil fuels we will use. It is a we're gonna do you know the what's the Intel's Moore's law? I'm going to come up with a law. We're going to call this the Turley Tanner law. It's, it's, it's actually a good one. What's the next one? <laughs> National energy security considerations will continue to be prioritized over international climate goals. This one is critical. It is really going to happen because people are tired. Yep. I mean, next one, U.S. energy policy and its future direction will become a central issue in the fall elections. Yep. I, I disagree a little bit with this one, assuming he. Well, because I think he probably wrote this prior to the assassination attempt in order that I think the shift has focused now a little bit on 
who do you want? And I, I think the, the it shifted a little bit. I think it's going to be a issue. Do I think it'll be the central issue? I'm not sure. Next there, one, yeah, global. It, to, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I agree. A central, not the central. Yes. Next one. Global demand for crude oil will increase between two to two point five million barrels of oil per day per 2024. You know, he he points out that the the IEA only has seven hundred thousand barrels per day year over year. So he's really going out on a limb three X in what he thinks it's going to be. Uh, the price of crude oil will not rise above ninety dollars per barrel at any point during 2020 before. Absolutely agree with that. I think we've got a better chance of seeing fifty nine dollar oil than we do ninety one dollar oil. Yeah. What do you think about his next one here? The U.S. domestic rig count will gra- I mean, continue to gradually drop. I think he's spot on. I think, unfortunately, especially with the not the with with everybody basically assuming former President Trump's going to win. Even even Kramer was. I mean, Kramer was talking about it this morning on CNBC. So maybe we're wrong. Maybe the inverse Kramer is coming in. But I completely oh, no. agree. If now's the time to buy energy stocks, if you want, because by the time November rolls around, you're going to see, you know, drill, baby, drill. The last one, there will be no big spikes in gasoline prices during 2024. He's probably right in this one. Maybe just, you know, he points out no big spikes, just normal ebbs and flows to be expected during the year in which global crude markets have remained unusually stable. Here's where I'm going to say, I'm going to put a caveat and put a dart on this one. Okay. If we have anything in the beginning of 2025, because they are eliminating the national gasoline reserves, strategic gasoline reserves out of the East in order to keep gasoline prices down. Once those are gone, yes, we'll see some volatility. Biden lackey tells CNBC to fix inflation, ditch fossil fuels and boost green spending. Right. Next one. Oil extend gains as EIA confirms crude draw rising fuel inventories. Pretty interesting here. Taking a look at Canada, oil and gas exports are increasingly important for Canada's economy. Very important there. Good news. India ups LNG imports in June. It's very important for India to help increase their LNG and reduce the uh, carbon there. I want to give a shout out to Elon, to Elon Musk. Elon Musk explains why Tesla's robo taxi event is delayed. So we want to cover that here for here just a little bit. But let's start with our first story here. Ex Biden lackey tells CNBC to fix inflation, ditch fossil fuels, and boost green spending. On a July 12th segment of CNBC Squawk Box, Jennifer Harris, the director of the Hewlett Foundation's Economy and Society Initiative, lauded massive government spending on cleaner energy sources as a potential cure for inflation. Notably, she had seen as uh, previously served on the Biden administration. At least energy is moving to a set of cleaner energy sources for the grid that not knowing that don't have the kind of inflationary channels that oil and gas do. She is so mistaken. We've had a moment in the Inflation Reduction Act and other public investments that we've had to sever some of these traditional channels for inflation. She is 100% wrong. CNB anchor Joe didn't seem impressed. He brought up the massive cost of switching energy sources and asked Antonio if the transition to beat inflation would be worth it. At least he asked. He added, solar and wind may very well have been our main source of energy, but they simply can't today. They're net losers. And if you look at the Inflation Reduction Act, by the way, not only are they helping strangle reliable sources of cheap energy like coal, oil, and natural gas, but on top of that, they're funneling more scarce resources into solar, wind, which again are net losers. Hats off to him on that one. Harris had the cheese pod offer this uh, absurd cure uh, immediately after the CNBC host, Melissa Lee, brought it up. The IRA is an inflation driver. I applaud them. Tony called out the Biden administration for allocating $7.5 billion and then just seven charging stations two years later. 
It is just flat amazing the amount of money wasted. Monthly inflation has averaged 5.4% under the Biden administration as the president signs massive spending bills after massive spending bills. But to the end users or the consumers, energy is well up over 30 to 35%. That in, in the last three years impacts everything so inflation may be only averaging it hit as a high nine percent but the effective impact to consumers is extremely high what i do know is that the fed's hands are tied here because the government is spending trillions of dollars it doesn't have i couldn't agree more anyway hats off to newsbusters that's where this story came out of Thank <laughs> you.